Welcome back to another episode of Simplicity TV. I am Jen Pike, and today we are chatting about hair. Talking about your hair growth, we're talking about how to grow thick hair and to support healthy hair naturally. And I am coming to you not just as a woman with hair, but as somebody who in the last couple of years ended up suffering from pretty significant hair loss for the first time ever in my life. And for me, it was specifically due to a high level of stress that was happening in the world around me and quite honestly, in the world that is my body and in my nervous system. Now you can see, I still have a ton of hair. My hair, I have actually in the last couple of years allowed to start to gray naturally on its own and haven't colored my hair for about three years now. But what you can't see is that I have about half the amount of hair that I used to. So while I still have a ton of it, I used to have so much more. For me going through this as a woman and somebody who is on camera and who, who does this, I'm a functional health practitioner for a living. I teach about the health and the care of our bodies and our hormones and our hair and our skin. When these changes started to happen, I really had to pull back and look at the things that I was doing and the things that I was not doing, the way that I was feeling and how all of that was impacting the quality and the health of my hair overall, the growth of it, the regrowth. And there's so much regrowth. Like <laughs> now I don't, I don't lose the hair anymore. Now I have so much regrowth that it kind of feels like, you know, a bit of a porcupine, but I thought this was an important one to bring to you here, um, as an episode and to chat about. So there are a lot of different factors that go into the quality and the health of our hair. Our genetics have an impact on this. Our age has an impact on this in terms of, as we start to age and get older and we're going through different hormonal phases, the texture of our hair, right? So the dryness, the feeling, the texture of our hair starts to change. Our body's ability to be able to grow it at a certain rate and pace, thickness, all of that, the luster, the shine, it shifts and it changes in response to our hormones, to our environment, to the products that we are using and to the things that we put in our body as well. So what we're going to explore today and take a look at are a few different things that I really want you to pull back and think about. So, you know, I want you to really step into this energy that it is not ever one thing. It is not simply the products that you're using or the supplements that you're taking or the food at the end of your fork, that it really is a combination of many things. When it comes to regrowing our hair, if you went through a period of time, and this could have been postpartum, it could have been post illness, it could have been post surgery post traumatic stress that it is going to take on average anywhere from six to 18 months. So a half a year to a year and a half to really see the full shedding stop and to start to see a lot of that consistent, healthy thickening and regrowth to happen. So this is not something that we're going to be able to change overnight. It doesn't matter how desperately you want it or how you try and stack a lot of these new habits and, you know, lifestyle pieces, it's going to take some time. So I think that's the first thing to really understand. Now, when we're talking about your nutrition, getting enough vitamins and minerals and whole food, food Foods that are not just made up of, you know, unhealthy processed ingredients and lots of sugars and unhealthy, you know, trans fats and seed oils. And honestly, you know, things that when we look at the label, we're like, I don't even know what that is. Why is there a number in the food label? Why are there artificial colors and, you know, sweeteners and all of these different ingredients? Really, when we look at that, what we're seeing is there's probably going to be a ton of flavor, more than enough calories, but no actual nutrition in that food. So what we're really looking for 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 our hair is we need to have healthy fat. We need to have great sources of protein and amino acids, which are building blocks, not just for your muscles, but for your cells, for your skin, for your hair, your nails, so much of your body. And then we want to look at key things like our vitamins A, B, C, E, zinc, trace minerals as well too, things like selenium, all of this biotin are going to help to support the growth and the health of your hair. So when you're thinking about the food that you're actually going to be, you know, cooking or preparing in your kitchen, healthy animal sources of protein, incredible plant-based sources of nutrients, getting in all of your different colors. So your purples, your reds, your blues, your greens, your oranges, making sure that you are getting in foods that are complete. So I'm a huge fan of using something like egg whites to get additional protein but I also add in whole egg where I'm getting 
holding all the whole food nutrients and understanding that the egg white and the yolk are working synergistically as a whole food, not just in its state, but in my body when I ingest that as well too. So I have definitely found there to be a massive correlation in women's bodies who have a lack of proper vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. And you also suffer from digestive inflammation issues that are really impairing their body's ability to not only break the food down that they're eating, but absorb it and uptake it for then their cells to be able to use that to create things like healthy hair. Nutrition is number one. The second thing is actually taking care of your scalp. So we think about, you know, moisturizing or dry brushing and taking care of the skin that we see and we touch. But when we talk about our scalp, I know so many of the women who have come to me sharing their hair loss have said, I was told not to put conditioner on my scalp that that's what was making it be oily. I was told to only put the conditioner around where I make a ponytail and then run it through the ends. I'm gonna tell you that the exact opposite is true. Now, I am not a hairstylist. I don't specialize in studying about hair follicles and about the science of hair coloring and treatments and all of those things. I am a woman, I'm a mom, and I'm a practitioner, and I really focus on looking at my own scalp and those that are in front of me with people I'm working with. And I'll tell you, when you start to massage your scalp, when you start to apply oils to your scalp as part of that massage, when you really start to work the actual scalp area, you apply your healthy organic conditioners to your scalp, it is going to be less dry, there's going to be more circulation, there's going to be more lymphatic fluid and energy and more life coming into those follicles that are actually sitting right there in the scalp. So I'm a huge fan of using your fingers to massage. You can also get like silicone scalp massagers that you could use. I love jojoba oil to go in my hair, castor oil in the hair as well too. And then there are different companies and products that are formulated with additional ingredients and essential oils that aren't gonna dry the scalp out, but that are actually going to nourish that landscape that you are growing your hair from. The other thing is that avoiding too much heat Okay, so I typically only wash my hair about once every five to seven days. Now, I came from having a ton of hair, and I also came from a time of having really oily hair, an oily scalp, where I felt like I was having to wash it every two days. I also have been teaching fitness for the past 26 years of my life and work out five days a week. So I've always had a lot of, you know, sweat and those types of things happening. And in these last, you know, eight to 10 years, making the change, and I had to train my scalp and my hair to get used to, you know, in the beginning, day three and day four, super oily and greasy, hello bun. It was just a slick Rick hairstyle that I had that was going on. And then as the years went on, now it's like, this is actually you know, I haven't washed my hair for four days at this point, and it's still actually feeling really fresh. I've taught classes, I've gone to hot yoga. You know, you learn how to blow dry the sweat out, but you also learn, you know, really good quality organic dry shampoo and things like that. And I've actually applied oil and moisturized my scalp on the days in between in that process. When we're talking about excessive heat styling, it's blow drying your hair every day. It's using a straight iron multiple times a day, using a wand or a curling iron. It's going to lead to breakage. It's going to lead to thinning. And so if you can limit your use of hot tools as much as possible, um, it's really gonna go a long way towards preventing new damage and helping you have time to heal the current damage that is going on. The other thing that I've really learned in the last few years of going through this journey on my own is getting my hair trimmed regularly. So in the beginning, when I was really, you know, I'll say rehabilitating from it, I was going and getting my ends trimmed. Like it's called a dusting in the hairstyling world. I was going about every eight to 10 weeks. And now I go about three or four times a year. And as I am, because I've been letting my hair go gray and there's still, you know, some of the old color from years ago in the bottom, what I've been doing is about every four months, I go and get about four or five inches taken off. So it's like it gets down to my navel, I chop it back up to around my chest, and that's been letting the grow out happen. But it's also been allowing years of that heat damage and just time to be cut off and allow the new growth that's coming through to be much more balanced overall. So generally, the recommendation is to get a dusting on your ends about every six to eight weeks. I feel like you could stretch that about every eight to 10, but we make the mistake mistake when we're trying to grow our hair or, you know, correct our hair from a lot of hair loss and not getting it cut at all. And that actually can slow down the growth of your hair and make it a little bit worse. The other thing I'll say in that when we're talking about, you know, tools that we're using in hair care is using a wide tooth comb and being really gentle. So brushing from the bottom up, I also use a spray leave-in conditioner on my hair 
all the time that has a built-in heat protectant. Um, I use one from doTERRA, but there are many companies out there who have good quality, more natural based products that you could use. And I have found that by having less tangling and having a better surface to work with and having this wide tooth comb, I'm not pulling beautiful but delicate hairs that could be holding on by a thread at that follicular root. And so instead, just being very gentle means I'm holding less hair in my hand and keeping more hair on my head. The other thing I would say around that as well, too, is if you are using really tight ponytail holders, like really tight, all the pulling, right? So if you're always doing ponytails, you're always doing tight buns, you're always always doing braids, this can actually pull on the hair and lead to more damage as well. So opt for looser hairstyles, let your hair be down, use ties that are a little bit more gentle on the hair and you're not, you know, winding it around umpteen times. Let the hair be a little bit looser, use clips that keep it into a loose place. And then I want to bring this around before we end today by circling back to where I started, which is talking about the impact of stress. So it can definitely contribute to the hair loss. For me in those last few years, my my stress hormones. So my adrenals were definitely in a fight or flight energy, which means my cortisol was not um, as balanced as it could be, which was impacting my blood sugar and my insulin. You know, it can also put you into a much more androgenic state. So if you are a woman who tends to run more on that five alpha reductase pathway, you, you know, have elevated levels of testosterone, you are more inclined to have hair loss. And when you're in times of stress, with dysregulated blood sugar, you know, maybe working out too intensely, not getting enough sleep, not paying attention to your breath and your body as a whole, you're increasing the risk for that androgenic activity to lead to more hair loss. So it was really about me recognizing what are the things that I have control over in my life and in my response and what am I allowing to come into my field and my energy and in my mindset and in front of my eyes that I could really start to pull away from and how could I calm my body? So walking is therapy and medicine for me being out in nature, disengaging from devices like this is really important. My yoga, my breath work, you know, getting to sleep, getting enough sleep, breathing good quality air, all of those things for me are very grounding to my nervous system. And if my nervous system feels more regulated, all the other areas of my body are going to be more regulated and better able to have the resources to be healthy. So there are a lot of different natural methods that you can utilize to start to decrease the impact of why you're losing the hair in the first place. And then there are a lot of natural things that you can be using and doing to help to support Support the regrowth. So the scalp massaging, oils like castor oil in your hair, really reevaluating nutrition. I will say in that as well too, one thing I found really beneficial is using, um, I used beef liver capsules for a while and now use an organ complex. The one I use is from Paleo Valley. I have found that to be tremendous, getting enough plant-based nutrients in from things like my Juice Plus and not skimping on my omega-3s have also been really important. As with anything, it always comes down to you, the individual. So if anything today, you know, sparked interest in you and you're interested in working with somebody one-to-one, -one, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can, first of all, hit subscribe down here and then connect with us, hello at genpike.com and let us know if there's any way we can help you moving forward. And until next time, I'll see you soon. Wishing you more simplicity and more ease in all that you do. Thank you.